أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله within this chapter we're going to be discussing with all the different rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed before us within this holy month the opportunity that we have and how best to pace ourselves within this holy month of Ramadan because as we see from the speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he clearly states when he's telling the people of the merits of the month of Ramadan, he says that within this month, your breathing is tasbih, your sleeping within this month is worship, that all your rituals within this month are accepted, all your prayers within this month are granted. So knowing all these bounties that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has bestowed upon us, you'll find many people find it difficult to prepare themselves for Ramadan. As in, not only do I have to refrain from food and drinks, anything else that would invalidate my fasting. But on top of that, there's all these different aspects in which I can gain closeness towards Allah and an abundance of reward within this month. However, You'll find that I come across the understanding and the rituals that are recommended within this particular night of Laylatul Qadr, for example, that we will remember it or try to do the Ahya within three different nights. And you begin to look at the different A'mal rituals that we need to undergo of worship. And some people may be thinking to themselves, I need to pace myself. On one hand, you'll find people will be looking at these rituals that are going to be practiced within these holy nights. And we understand Laylatul Qadr is greater than a thousand, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ better than a thousand months outside this particular day or particular night. So you'll find that they understand that there is a great amount of reward that is to be gained within this holy night of power and they begin to look at it you have two different angles one side will say to themselves I need to make sure that I do each and every thing that is mentioned to be recommended within that holy night other people would say to themselves well I'm looking at this particular list that I have to go through in order for me to to its complete nature, fulfill all my duties or recommended acts within these holy nights. And they say to themselves, well, this is too much for me. And that they will give up altogether. And that's the understanding and the opportunity we want to take from this particular chapter that we want to speak of how to pace ourselves. Because we don't want to be of those people that do too much without the quality. All those people on the other side of the scale which look at the acts within this holy month and say to themselves, I'm not going to practice anything at all because it's too much to comprehend and to allow myself to practice these things. And we understand this is not necessarily just acquaint with the nights of power or the night of power that we remember on three different occasions. However, it's also on a daily ritual thing. Salat Subh, you finish it and you begin to read dua that's you know, recommended that's an hour long. You'll find that you read one chapter of the Holy Quran as a recommended so that you can complete the entire chapter within the completion of the holy month of Ramadan being 30. And you'll find people will either do too much too fast or don't do anything at all. So on the one side, you might burn yourself out by doing too much at the start, you think to yourself that I cannot maintain this particular level of worship and this particular level of devotion in its acts for the entirety of the month. And on the other side, you'll find people will say, I can't even start because it's too much to think about. So in that understanding, we have a particular story from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam telling one of his companions. So he says, there was once a man that had a Christian neighbor. This Christian neighbor saw the etiquette of this Muslim man. And he said to himself, you know what? I love the way this person acts. I all of a sudden want to become what he is. Meaning I want to join this religion 
that this person has beautiful ethics, beautiful, let's say, understanding of nature, of social etiquette, that I see particular characteristics that I want to be like him. So one day he knocks on the Muslim person's, Muslim man's door and he says to him, oh man, I would like to join this religion of yours. So he says, not a problem. So he taught him the shahada and the next day in the morning, he says, I'll come towards your house and I'll teach you how to be become a Muslim. So Imam Sadiq is saying this story to his companion. He says, the next day in the morning, Fajr, before the sun rises, he knocks on the Christian man's door. When he knocks on the door, the Christian man says, what's going on? You know, you're, you're knocking, the sun isn't, isn't even up yet. He says, no, no, it's going to be the time for Salat al-Subah. You need to come with me, you're a Muslim now. So the Christian man comes with this Muslim man. Now Muslim man comes with the Muslim man and goes towards the mosque in preparation for Salat al-Subah. So the Muslim man is teaching him. He says, this is what you need to perform before Salat al-Subah. This is the way that you do ablution. This is what you need to do as mustahab prayers. And all of a sudden, until Salat al-Subah came. And he prayed the two rakat of Salat al-Subah. As soon as he finished, you know, the, the newly quaint Muslim man wants to go back home to, to sleep and regain his strength. So uh, the prior Muslim man tells him, oh, where are you going? You know, as in, it's, you've just prayed, it's time for Qur'an. It's a very, very recommended act that you recite the Holy Qur'an uh, and then you'll, you'll be given very, very much a high rank and great reward for this. And Imam Sadiq is saying this story. And he says that this man didn't let him return back to his house because all of a sudden Salat al-Dhuhr was upon them with all these mustahabbat and this Qur'an. And so he kept that man there, taught him how to pray Salat al-Dhuhr, kept him again until Salat al-Asr, kept him again until Salat al-Maghrib, and again until Salat al-Asha. So you'll find this entire day that this newly acquainted Muslim man was in the mosque doing these acts of worship, these acts that were recommended. And so the next day in the morning, the Muslim man knocks on the Christian man's door once again, just before the sun rises. And he goes, you know, let's go towards the mosque again together so we can start our day. So the Christian man looks at him and he says, no, 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 I've left your religion because I do nothing else except worship for the entirety of the day. Because I have work, I have a family, I have other commitments, responsibilities. So the understanding that Imam Sadiq wants to teach his companions when saying this story, he's saying that every single person has responsibilities on this earth. Family, work, they need to find a balance within themselves. That's why when you find, when we read in Mafatih al-Jinan, all the different recommended acts, it's not for the normal person to act upon. No, no. Sheikh Abbas al-Qummi, when he writes that book and compiles it, it's for Sheikh Abbas al-Qummi, it's for the people that want to reach the, the heights, but they don't start with that particular act. No, no, no. They start slowly. If I want to do Salat al-Layl as a recommended act of worship, I don't go straight away and do that entire aspect of mustahabbat that Sheikh Abbas al-Qummi writes within Mufatih al -Jinan. No. I start with very basic understanding, very basic way in order for me just to get up the night, prepare my body, get used to the fact that I'm waking up in the midst of the night to talk towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then once I have a consistency, then I can elevate my salah. I can develop it at a greater level, a greater connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it needs to be slowly. Because if you try, as Imam Sadiq paints the picture, to do too much too soon, you'll end up going back, backwards, not forwards, towards that which you want to attain in the future. That's why it can be seen in many different aspects as well. You won't see it the first day, the second day, the third day, the development of your soul. It's just like the physical body, not just the spiritual body. In a physical body sense, when you go towards, let's say, you go towards the gym. If you go towards the gym, whether it be to gain weight or to lose weight, or any of the other aspects that people go towards the gym, 
you'll find you have a goal that you set yourself physically. But if you were to go one, two, three, four days, you won't see anything towards where you want to reach. But you'll find that if you are consistent with it, let's say it's one month, two months, three months, one year, and you're consistent, you'll find yourself that you've actually took, taken a step closer towards your end goal. Likewise, spiritually, if you want to attain a greater spiritual aspect within the holy month of Ramadan or utilizing what Allah has given us and gifted us within this holy month, then without a shadow of doubt, you have to look at it in the long run. That if I want to perfect my soul, it's not an understanding that I need to throw myself into the deep end from day one. It's rather trying to find a consistency. If you can do everything from day one till day 30 consistently, without a shadow of doubt, then do it. But the understanding is the quality is what we're after. If you pray two rak'at with a presence of heart and khushu' and taqwa, just those two rak'at versus a person that prays 100 rak'at, 1,000 rak'at, but the whole time within those 100, 1,000 rak'at, he's thinking about everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now on the scales, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which one do you think has a greater rank or a greater reward? Without a shadow of doubt, we can look at the one that has a presence of heart to be greater in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we'll find ourselves trying to do, look at the mustahabbat within this holy month and saying to ourselves, there's eight rak'at here, 100 rak'at here, 50 rak'at here. And we try to do them in its complete essence. I need to finish 50 rak'at and you know you're, you're falling asleep and you have to do a lot three, four times during those hundred rak'at because you're not sure if you fell asleep or not. And that's not the essence of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that there. No, it's there, but if you pray two of those hundred rak'at with a presence of heart, it's greater than praying the hundred without the presence. So the understanding there is we need to focus on the quality of our actions rather than the quantity within this holy month and try to produce quality in its consistent fashion during the whole month of Ramadan, inshallah. Because we'll find ourselves within this holy month of Ramadan, the main understanding when we try to refrain from food and drink within this holy month is understanding that the physical side is closed or the physical body is all of a sudden closing its mouth, let's say. And the spiritual body and the spiritual mouth is all of a sudden open to gain as much as it can from this holy month of Ramadan. And that's something we need to really work on and try to gain as much as we can from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to gain from this holy month of Ramadan. So inshallah, in this chapter, we looked at and learnt the understanding of trying in one way or another to create quality that's consistent throughout the month, rather than quantity that doesn't have value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.